and gentlemen, hello and welcome to this new episode of Sotorial Talks, the podcast and the YouTube channel. Well, sometimes I have the impression I'm always saying the same thing, but it happens that maybe some of you are listening to this or uh, watching this for the first time. So this is a podcast which is filmed and uh, we are filming this from directly from our uh, living room in Bourgogne, France. And once again, I have the pleasure to be with my beautiful wife, Sonia Glynn, uh, for co-hosting these tutorial talks. Hello, Sonia. How do you do, darling? Hi, pretty well today. Thank you. So the, the topic of today will be, a, can we say, a follow-up of a previous yes, episode? We, we, uh, we recorded about, I don't like to say do's and don'ts, you know, it's not my style, but uh, about we talked about the most Classic common... style mistakes. Well, yes. the most common mistakes that people are doing, um, um, are making when there are... Uh, most of the time new in the sartorial uh, crowd and in their sartorial learning curve. I like this idea of a learning curve. Yes, because but there was also sophisticated ideas too of what could be mistakes. Exactly. But at the same time, uh, today we're going to speak about something which is, well, our reactions to some people who are going too much in the do and don'ts. You know, these kind of style preachers, they <laughs> say, you should never do that. Oh, you will go into the sartorial hell. Or oh, you should do that. You will go and you will have sartorial salvation. I don't think such thing exists really that in the sartorial. Yeah, it no, drives it me. It doesn't bother me as much as it bothers you. Yes. Um, she can, wit you, you're a witness of my, sometimes I really pissed. To yeah, just, you really get irritated. Yeah, because Because who are you to tell me what to do, what not to do? And precisely today, we're going to speak about some kinds of so-called quote-unquote rules that are dictated by most of the time self-proclaimed style gurus that uh, we think it's okay to make or to break. That is to say, mistakes that are okay to make. Okay, if I'm a parent, uh, if somebody would have said to me one day that I will, uh, I will record a show uh, saying to our public, uh, we're going to tell you about mistakes that are okay to make. It's beautiful mistakes, okay to make. I would not have believed it because you, this you is strange. You may not have, but just don't believe everything you hear, even if we say it. Yeah, speak in the middle of the don't microphone. Don't believe everything yeah. you hear, even if we say it. You have to come to your own exactly, conclusions. Exactly, exactly. So let's break a few rules today with a lot of pleasure and let's try to be a little bit, um, let's see w which don'ts you have the right to do. So let's go now with the first mistake that is okay to make. And this is, people say to you, often you should never wear a double-breasted suit open. That is to say, if you have a double-breasted suit, you should always wear it buttoned. And I even heard some people, insane people saying, even when you are seated. Well, my friends, if you want to explode your buttons, or if you want to feel totally compressed after a good pot of fur, a good piece of camembert, do that. But uh, the point is that, of course, you can open your jacket. What about if the heat is so intense outside, you can barely breathe? Yes. Open it, breathe. Yes. But it's even more than that for me. I think that uh, at Piti Womo, mm -hmm. and a lot of people were looking at me as I was committing a crime. <laughs> Come on, Hugo Jacome is wearing his double-breasted open. It is true that a double-breasted is rather made to be worn clothes and I wear mine, I would say 75 or 90% of the time uh, closed, of course, because it's much more elegant. But honestly, more and more, I discovered that when you wear it open, it creates some kind of a... Ambiance. Yes. Some kind of a relaxed uh, flair that you can specifically work very well with a linen mm, double-breasted. Nice, yes. And it creates a kind of a resort feeling. So yes... Ladies and gentlemen, it is possible 
to wear your double-breasted open because after all, it is your suit and nobody has to tell you how to wear it. it how do you feel be, about that, I darling? I think it'll be very easy to win the Italians over. The English may be a little more resistant. Yes, But hey, there's a few progressive English out there mm -hmm. that I've seen opening their double breasts. Well, I still have to meet them. I'm just kidding. Of course, <laughs> there are some progressive ones, but the Italian, they can do it very easy. No problem. The second item, I, I took a few notes because um, um, uh, we decided to do this episode immediately after we recorded the first one. So, oh, yeah, this one is good. Okay. Sometime I put on Instagram some, um, you know, funny outfits because we are, you know, uh, we are at a, uh, at a moment in our sartorial learning curve because we are still learning every day, Sonia and me. Um, but we are seasoned sartorialists, we can say that. And sometimes we like to take chances and to take risks. And uh, I put on some pictures on Instagram and sometimes I receive people who are literally shocked truly upset oh my gosh they can't understand what happened exactly you remember it was um, the very first day of july i'm sorry the table is moving a little It's bit okay. It does sometimes. where did we buy this table uh, at an antique store just uh, about 200 steps away from our home it's not perfect because it's moving a little bit it's well, very old it's yeah so we good. like it we <laughs> like it all. so the second one sometimes i put up on instagram a photo of myself wearing what we call a Winchester shirt. So if you are from America, it has nothing to do with a gun. It's no, something it different. A Winchester shirt is a shirt with a contrast contrasted sorry I'm French. Say it in English. Contrasting. Contrasting. Color. And cuff. Okay. So most of the time I like to contrast my colors, but I don't like to contrast my curves because I think it's a little bit too much. It's my friend Alessandro Siniscalchi, the famous shirt maker from Milan, taught me not, he said, if you contrast your color, don't contrast your curves. Because Be you look like you stepped out of an 80s movie. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, uh, the not guy everybody. from Wall Street, you know, very okay. banking and trading yes. atmosphere. But more than that, he told me something very interesting. Indeed. He said, if you uh, contrast both of them, you yes. will not be able to wear it without a tie. But if you ah. only contrast the color, it's mm. okay to wear it without a tie. So ladies and gentlemen... It deformalizes when, it. What? It deformalizes exactly. it, if that's a word. Yes. Exactly. So the thing is that I received literally, not insult, but very aggressive messages. Even one day I said, where is the Parisian gentleman? He doesn't exist anymore. I said, yes, sir, I exist. Because once again, I... I have confidence in my own eyes. Yes. And I love to wear a contrasted white color shirt as long as my cuffs are not also contrasted. Well, you knew the rule and you decided to break it. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very easy. So uh, let's go for one that you, uh, you will probably be more uh, comfortable for than me to, to, to speak about. It's about clip-ons versus buttons mm -hmm. on suspenders. Same thing. It happens that sometimes you don't have the buttons inside your, your trousers made by your tailor or your uh, custom salon or your alteration tailor, and you want to wear suspenders. And well, well, sometimes it can be uh, handy to have some clip -ons. You know, I think that the, the idea is all the people that say, oh, you must have the button sewn into your trousers and only use suspenders that are buttoning underneath your trousers. Never use the clip-on. I think that this is borrowed yeah. from the idea that the clips are super tacky mm -hmm. and it's some cheap discount store, <laughs> um, you know, suspenders or braces that, that, that you bought and that this is a travesty. Don't do it. But these days, it's just not the case. Nope. The clips can be very high level, yes. beautiful metals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just have very nice mechanisms. And I just don't agree. I say you want to use either style, it's fine. Actually, I don't dislike even the aesthetic of a clip-on. It doesn't bother me at all, unless no. it is indeed cheap from Walmart or something. Sorry, Walmart, but but yeah, I mean, uh, oh, don't, I don't be know sorry why. for Walmart. They're going, they're doing well. Don't hey, worry. I mean, they do their job, <laughs> you know, for for what needs to be done. But I, I have no problem yeah. with that. And I guess um, these famous uh, braces, uh, suspenders maker Albert. Thurston, which is one of yes. the biggest, or one of the That's most well-known. That's probably well the biggest known. name, I suppose. Yes. Uh, he always provides both. 
if I'm right, he you does. have the option to have it with the brides. I just, how yeah, do you call it? The bridles? Not, how do you call not it? always. Yes. Not always. And you know, I'm sorry. I do not, the name, I'm having word finding problem. I don't know. Okay. I'm sure someone will drop in the comment. Okay. But, but, um, I think they have the, the ones that you can, the dual purpose, you can either use the buttons or use the clips. Yes. And then I think they also have just buttons and just clips. The uh, whole range, I'm pretty sure I've seen the whole range with that. Oh, I, 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 well, we have to check on that. I'm Let's pretty do, sure they, they give you always uh, the option. And then I saw with our friend Cosmos, he showed me then the one you don't have button, they also, they also have some clip-on buttons. Which is that buttons that are not you know, buttons that you put seen inside? That. Yeah. That's, yeah. You know, explain it. What is it? Well, it's a, it's a kind of a clip on, you know, yes. and inside it's, it, it mimics a button so that you can hook your thing on the button. It's a button you clip on, literally. Oh. I will, I will, uh, we'll try to put a I picture you if you have one. I want to see that myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's, it's a pity we should have had them. We have some upstairs, but I don't have the time to leave to uh, for okay. two, two right. buttons. So, uh, so it's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sorry if you are disappointing, disappointed, sorry, that uh, the Parisian gentleman and uh, Sonia Glynn tells you that it's okay, but honestly, it is okay as long as you like it. Yeah. Now, uh, I go to your list. Uh, you speak about tie length. Just express what you want to say about that. All right. You know, there's the traditionalist, and they say that tie has to come, uh, the length of the tie at the tip has to fall right in the middle where <laughs> the belt may be if you were to wear a belt or where the belt is if you are wearing a belt. And don't go too short and don't go too long. There is a specified length. Yeah. I would say don't go too long. That's really? for sure. Don't that. put your your tie uh, in to cover your family jewels. I think <laughs> this is not really elegant. Unless you're Japanese, I'm sorry. I don't mean to say, but you know what? Some of the Japanese what, people what do you mean at Pitti Womo. Some of the Japanese men at Pitti Womo, they love this look. Maybe it's cultural of the extra long tie. No, but what and they I do? I don't know how they do it, but it looks. I have nice. to correct you for the first time no. in the history of this show. Oh, no, they kidding. like to do it with the small blade. They like to have the small blade extremely long and the, the front blade a little bit shorter. This is what I do normally, uh, not today because I didn't have enough silk, but normally I like to have my small blade a little bit longer, not much. Ideally, you have to, to be the same length, but they do. And the Japanese, they love to have this, longer, the, the longer, right. but the small blade, not the front okay. blade. Well, I, I've seen both, but I agree. I, I agree. That's so the better. Sorry, that's I, the, I, I no, didn't correct you. I was just say. having fun. So I, uh, go ahead and, and straighten your tie there if you want. Say again? Yeah, perfect. So I think you you put that um, long, that a smaller blade out because you have such a sentimental feeling of our time in Italy because we spent three years in Italy you know, writing the Italian Gentleman book, and you just got this affinity for yes. doing that. Yes. And so it's a sentimental move, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Well, the small blade uh, being longer than the front blade uh, for Americans is like uh, sin. Oh, I know. I receive, uh, they don't understand. It's, no, no, they're confused. Uh, I, I had, okay, no, if you no, look at our YouTube channel and you've been commenting, and I even remember one guy commenting a few months ago on one of our shows on, on ties saying, how can we trust a guy who uh, have uh, the small blade of his tie longer than his front blade. How can we trust a guy who doesn't know even how to tie a perfect knot? Because my knots are imperfect. I On like purpose. when they are a little bit, you know, uh, they have um, um, a dimple. You call it dimple, dimple this? Yeah. I like to show a little and bit. And you go to the side. Yeah, I like to be, you know, to show a little bit of the side. It doesn't matter. It gives life to things, you know. And so uh, imperfection. And we also know one of the most famous tailors in the world, Massimo Cifonelli, he likes yes. to wear his ties very short. Very short, like the Duke of Windsor, I guess. He yes. used to do that too. And why not, Oh, it's his style. So never listen to people say, you should exactly. There's some, I'm sorry to say, but there's some YouTube channel that even give you centimeters. The tie has to be one inch and three fourth from the belt. And then some people are asking me many times, what is the exact length of your tie or what is the size of your lapel? And most yes. of the time I say, I have no idea. They're fitting it into a formula. But what you're saying is use your eyes. Yes. Use your eyes. Yes, use your eyes specifically for that. Now, you said no brown in town. Well, 
that's something that irritates me probably the most. People say, okay, you don't have the right, if you're a gentleman, to wear brown in town after six o'clock. They mainly speak about shoes. Well, uh, you can tell that. I mean, it, it, it refers to an era. Yeah, I think that it's mainly um, ba English-based. It is totally yes, British. Yes, completely. Yes. Yeah, it refers to an era where the gentlemen had time. They were aristocrats. They were hunting in the afternoon. They were fishing in the in the morning. They were doing this. They were changing, you know, a Dunton Abbey, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it was not, f according to the etiquette, it was not uh, allowed to wear brown shoes in town. Well, according to um, the English legend, uh, a great shoemaker who, um, who didn't found, he didn't found it Edward Green, but who, who revived Edward Green in the 1980s called John Lustig, mm. was doing such beautiful um, um, shine and beautiful, he, he, the, the, how do you say, the, the burnish? Uh, how you patina burnish? Or? Patina? No, but it's, it was, um, it's called a tan, tarn and oh, burnish. burnishing the edges. Exactly. The toes. Uh, on brown shoe that he eventually convinced the English gentleman that it was okay uh, to wear brown shoes in I imagine a lot of people watching today may not even have heard of this saying, no. no brown and tan. So <laughs> it's a good thing to put in there in case you want to look it yeah. up and learn the history. Yeah. And if, and if you listen, if you hear somebody say, you should never, never, uh, because they, normally they do this, you should never wear brown in town. This is plainly ridiculous, it's, my friends. It's this history, is from ancient history. Yeah, it says ancient history is as if you would say you have to park, never park your horse in front of a coffee shop because your horse can poo on the sidewalk. You know, it's, it's, it's from you, another you know, era. I have to admit, you do cringe if we're having an event in the evening and you see someone walk in with light brown shoes of course at night. but that's common sense <laughs> okay i know no I this know. is common sense if, you, if you're I in mean, a formal event you have to wear black shoes it's i, I mean if it's a black I mean, tie not event semi-formal just a, just a wearing suits at night yeah at yeah. night uh, well it's not after six i'm not talking they say no brown in town i would say well, be careful with brown informal events. If you have a dark blue suit, it's common sense that you can have very dark brown shoes or even better, dark black shoes. Because, yeah, the more, the, the, the rule is, you, you the darker, to, the, the, form, the more formal. This just makes sense. But be careful with this formal, because some people say formal means white tie, semi-formal means tuxedo. Yeah. And then um, dress. Business dress. No, for me, when I say suits. formal, it's an occasion uh, no, where you have to dress. No, that, this is the that. do's and don'ts Concerned. people we're yes, speaking about. Yes. Okay, the next is sandals with suits. So I have nothing to say on the subject. Okay, this is because you know it's not mine. It's not my favorite subject. No, I know that, but we have to say there is a phenomenon that takes place where there's a classic style figure who is well known, okay, in a niche, a growing niche community that will break a rule yes. and suddenly shake the foundation. I know we're not talking about, you know, something that's life changing, but they will shake the foundation of a preconceived notion. And in this case, I'm going to name Lorenzo Cipinelli, yes. who has for years been, been wearing wearing sandals, especially in the summer, of course, with suits. And I think he's broken the mold. And I believe because of him, we're seeing a branching out of wearing sandals with suits. And actually, it looks not so bad. Well, I have no opinion on so this So you one. need to go to the Lorenzo <coughs> Cifanelli Instagram. Uh, Lorenzo is my friend. And, and take and a I, look and see what you think. I see love him. I love him. I'm not a sandal guy, I must admit. But after, after all, this is... This is what our subject is so fun, is yes. that we don't have to have all the same taste, That's and there's right. no rules about that. It's the same thing as um, um, suits with shorts. You know, it was uh, a few years ago I mean, we saw... We, yeah, well, this was coming from a, a different uh, era, different age group, um, and the Ivy League guys made it look really cool, you know? And so we're just borrowing from that when people show up at Pity Womo. Yes. They're, they're looking at the history books yeah. and sort of mimicking what they've well, seen. I have nothing against that. I even I can even tell I have a few that was not looking that ridiculous. Yes. But most of the time it looked ridiculous because <laughs> a short doesn't go well with a jacket. But you don't like that. Uh, well, once again, I keep an open mind, but it's, uh, it's the same thing for the sandals. But if Lorenzo does it, 
it's probably because it is good because Lorenzo <laughs> is, is a is a style beast. And then you said on your list, no socks. Well, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put some music. Uh, I'm going to put some cello, not limoncello, <laughs> a cello. Is that okay like that? Okay. I have a formal confession to make in front of everybody. For years, uh, probably since more than a decade, I have been protesting against this fashion of wearing loafers without sock. I have been literally condemning people, saying they were outlaws, they were literally to be putting out of the picture people who dared to wear their loafers without socks. And all of a sudden, me, Hugo Giacomé, I confess with my right hand and my left hand, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have a Bible, I wish I had one, that I did it. I sinned. And actually, after uh, considering it with a new eye, it feels super good and actually not that inelegant at all. What do you think, darling? Uh, oh, so my I confession is over. Fast. I hope you will forgive me. I, I say always add a little sportiness to your suit if you can, unless you're in an event where you're not able to do that. And to me, not wearing socks or wearing the no-show socks with the shoes, if yeah. you're sensitive to how it feels, you know, to have a barefoot in your shoe, mm-hmm. it adds some sportiness, yeah. adds some life, it yeah. adds some energy. I say do it. Yes, and uh, honestly, uh, I, I, at the end, of course I will not do this in some f- kind of... Y- It has to match with the temperature. And the mood. And the mood mm-hmm. and the occasion. Exactly. If you are with friends in a kind of a resort um, ambiance, it goes very well. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, I'm not saying that it's okay to do it. He said now that I like you to do it. You enjoy it. I enjoy yes, it. And, indeed, uh, indeed. okay, I'm sorry, all the aficionado of the whatever time, whatever temperature, whatever shoe, you have to wear socks. Well, honestly, I can say now, specifically Belgian loafers, you know, these very relaxed, uh, they can be very formal Belgian loafers, but mm-hmm. when you have the kind of a more casual side, uh, they look almost strange with socks, actually, now for me. Mm-hmm. So, oh, And speaking of socks, you may know that there's supposedly this diehard rule that you would never, ever, in your, even in your dreams, wear white socks mm-hmm. with a suit. Yeah. But why is it that this is now a trend? I don't know. I'm seeing it in Japan. I'm seeing it in Australia. Um, it's some type of correlation with something probably with a, a band or a, a, a point in time. Leave a comment if you guys know why the white sock trend's coming back. I want to know. Okay, because this, I don't like that at all. You understand yeah, that? Uh, it, for me, eyes. it's non-negotiable. That's hurting your eyes. I, 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 can't, uh, I can't see that. I will never do this uh, 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 during this lifetime, maybe <laughs> the next life, but uh, during this lifetime, this I'm not sure I can't open do that. Call for comments. Yeah, well, what that's another. That's another. Uh, unbutton sleeve. So that's we could be, This is becoming a little bit technical uh, because uh, what about pe- your sleeves? What are you no, doing? but what I say technical right because not many people may who are listening to us or maybe mm. watching us. Not everybody may know that sometimes uh, if you buy a ready-to-wear suit of the rack, you have these buttons, and most of the time they are not. They don't work. And uh, if you go uh, custom or even more bespoke suiting, uh, you have what we call a uh, functioning button. You see, I can open these buttons. One uh, On this one, I have four buttons. All of them are working, you know. So we can, you can do this with, with your sleeve, okay? So some people say, oh, well, this one was open. I had one open. You know, I don't even notice how many I, I, I have open. So the rule is, is that when you have functioning button, it is a little bit, you say, bragging? Showing off. Yeah, okay. showing off uh, to leave one open because you want people to notice that you have one button open. Well, yeah. Honestly, sometimes I zoom out, I look at ourselves and say, are we really 
talking about opening a button or not opening. It, 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 some people are passionate about that. Yeah, you know what? I used to be that person and I, I have a confession to make. Oh, when, make when a I confession. Was... I'm going to put the music if you do your confession. This is confession oh, time. When I first started in classic style, probably for the first three years, I agreed with all the people that said that you have to keep your working buttons button because it's so... Ah, and it's just flamboyant. It's bragging. It's trying to be like uh, superior to others to unbutton your button and prove that you have a bespoke suit, that you have a made to measure suit. It's something your ego is just being so like out of proportion with where it should be. And ah, finally, I just relax. You know what? I unbutton my own buttons sometimes. Even today, look, I've unbuttoned. Um, Several buttons and rolled my sleeve cuffs up over my my buttons. I changed my mind. That was a, that was a nice confession, darling. <laughs> Two confessions in one show. This is very interesting. Well, to be honest, me, I don't even notice it anymore. Some people are noticing things that we don't notice anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. On this, you know, I was in front of you with this all button and one unbutton. It doesn't really matter. No. But if I had to choose, I think that. Leaving one unbutton can be also very elegant. It does. It's not and to more show comfortable off. Even. Yeah, because the thing is that um, most of people. I, I mean, not most of people, but that was a trend. It was, I would say, more five, six years ago, where people who were buying ready-to-wear suits were taking their suit to the alteration teller just to have uh, the the button holes opened. Yeah. Just to Classic try style to mimic. Classic people obsess over button holes. I'm yeah. just telling you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> Whatever. I, I remember last time we did a, a show on buttonholes. Uh, everybody was a little bit shocked with oh, the title. Oh, there's some good comments. If you go, yeah, they thought buttonholes. Yeah, they, said they thought else. we were saying you buttonholes. You guys but have <laughs> to go and see that show because there's a good good discussion on Yeah, that. it's called Buttonholes and Other Stuff. I don't remember yeah, the title. Yeah, read the comments. They're yeah, going to find it. Yeah, very interesting. So unbutton sleeve or button, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Um, and oh, you had clip on suspenders. Yeah, I we thought, already touched I'm on that. I'm sorry so about that, done, darling. And then we have a last one, but we can add so many. Uh, yeah, so never finished. wear belts, belts with vests or waistcoat because you say vest in the US, yeah, and, and they say waistcoat. In, in England, in England we yeah, say gilet. gilet. And you say gilet. Gilet. Yes. Uh, you say gilet in America too, right? Uh, yeah, some people do. Just okay. So the rule is uh, never wear belts with a gilet. I kind of agree with that. As long as you don't show your belts, you can wear one. But you have an, you know, another I've opinion on that. You know, I've always said never do that too. But I, I have to admit, so I've seen... Uh, I'm a victim of maybe some... Pictures of stars who are we wearing the belt with the vest. Yes. And it looked kind of rock and roll and kind of cool. So I'm saying that try it. And if you like it, do it. And if you don't, don't do it. Okay. Well, me, I, I'm personally, I, I, I don't like You're it. You're really pushing the limits. Well, I mean, it's just because I think it's just maybe style. it's because I'm only five foot ten. And I still believe that not only you are cutting your silhouette into with the belt, but on top of that, if your gilet, or UK, your vest is above your belt and you show your belt and the, and the bottom of your gilet, you cut your silhouette into two times. And it can look like a chunky mess. Well, That's true. yeah, That's most true. of the time it's not really interesting but a, a beautiful gilet that is covering the even the belt loops or the belt line mm -hmm. so much more elegant. smooths everything in out. my opinion smooths everything in my out. opinion That's true. just don't wear a wild colored belt really cutting yourself into pay attention to the colors you're yes, using yes 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 so i think uh, that was uh, what we had on the, we we could probably find dozens of other things again it's op again an open call for comments if there's other things yes yes add, yes you can comment please add mistakes that are okay, okay to, to make. make that was the title of this tutorial talk thank you everybody for you. following us thank you for um, uh, commenting thank you for contributing thank you for participating may i remind you we have a patreon page we never advertise this too it's much rare. it's yes. rare you go on patreon.com slash tutorial talks if you want to contribute thank you the pat so patreon.com uh, slash tutorial talks 
if you want to help us, it will be well, well, well received. Uh, thank you, everybody. We thank love you. you. Enjoy you. classic style. It may remain a pleasure. Make and enjoy. yes, and as usual, we finish by saying cheers, cheers everybody. Cheers.